So, part two is upon us. Time to sort out this bad boy and see what's going on with it. Now, um, thank you for all your comments on part one. I've got a little rough idea of what might be going on now, thanks to some comments and thanks to some thinking and whatnot. Um, first off, to clarify one thing, um, I did get the names of my cats mixed up, unfortunately. That's kind of disappointing. I should be a little bit more educated than that in terms of the order of operating systems, what version corresponds to what cat. I'm okay from Panther onwards, but those, you know, Puma, Cheetah and Jaguar just confuse the heck out of me. Anyway, moving on, um, the second thing about the first part is... Uh, I haven't worked on the G3 for quite a while, um, you know, and I completely forgot that this, this Mac doesn't have a boot menu. I, I always forget how old it is. This is, um, this is how awesome this Mac is. This is how much it shocks me. Um, go and check out some of my gaming videos on this thing. Um, it's got no boot menu. I always forget that. And, you know, I was trying to boot into the boot menu, thinking that the Mac was really screwing up and stuff. And uh, it's not. It just doesn't have a boot menu. So poor thing was trying to boot into something that didn't exist uh, within its firmware. So, yeah. No boot, no boot menu for the G3. Not a problem at all. Now that I realise that, I can approach things in a slightly different way. Now, moving on to the kernel panic itself. If you haven't seen part one, guys, I really recommend that you watch part one before this one. Um, that would make a lot more sense. Um, moving on to the kernel panic itself. I believe the SATA controller is conflicting with uh, the earlier versions of OS X. Now, I'm going to completely remove it in this video just to see and just to clarify. I'm also going to unplug every single hard drive apart from the hard drive in which I want to install uh, Mac OS X. Uh, the 10.1 or whatever disk I've got in there, 10.0, 10.1, something like that. Uh, anyway, this is going to be a pretty cool video, hopefully it's going to work out. N now, once I have the operating system installed and I reinstall the SATA card, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the panic again when I try and boot into uh, versions earlier than Tiger. However, the machine seems to be perfectly happy with booting into... Um, Mac OS 9 with the SATA card installed. So that's very, very interesting. So there's a lot of little troubleshooting we've got to do in this video, guys. It's going to be pretty interesting to do it together. Um, but the first things first, I'm just going to uh, get the G3 down off its platform, which is, you know, a little job in itself. We're going to shove it on the floor and I'm going to unplug everything that is not necessary in this machine. So I've got the G3 down. Let's open her up. <laughs> oh. Had to be done. Okay, so here's the inside of my G3. Pretty crammed full of hardware, guys, as you can see. Um, but basically, we're not interested in any of that. We're just interested in getting out some stuff. Which is kind of annoying, actually, because getting this stuff in in the first place can be a bit tricky. So, we're going to take some cards out and, uh, and leave it at that. So first off, I'm going to take out this USB card, just because I'm eliminating all of my possibilities. Um, PCI is one of the first sections you can start to troubleshoot if your computer is behaving weirdly under a new operating system. Because PC it's the exact same thing happened to me on my Mac Pro, actually, with my really crappy USB 3.0 cards that I put in there. Um, it really upset newer versions of OS X. I can't remember whether, whether it was Mountain Lion or Mavericks I was getting the problem with. But, God, this is what I was talking about. See, these things are just crammed in here. And uh, this is a particularly bent card, anyway, um, that could really do some attention, actually. Yeah, but that's just a standard. I don't know if it's USB 2.0. Um, it was in here when I got the machine. It might be 2.0. It looks like a fairly modern card. But it's only got two ports on it. They're available extensively in four-port versions, so, you know... Um, what I'm going to do is unplug both the SATA cables from the card. I'm going to leave the SATA cables in there and the drives in there because there's no harm in leaving those in the case. It's pointless screwing them out, unscrewing them. They're not connected to anything. I'll disconnect the power just because I don't really want drives spinning up for no reason. Uh, not connected to any data. Not connected, yeah, not connected to any, you know, form of interface rather. Um, oh, see, this is the thing. And, Ah, there we go. I hate taking these things out, guys. I mean, they're worth a lot of money. Um, but yeah, here's my Sonnet. Uh, slightly bent. SATA PCI card. Very nice. Taking that out. So both of those are out. 
All we have left to do now is I will leave both the original IDE drives uh, connected. No harm in leaving OS9 on there. Might need an operating system anyway. But I will just unplug this single Molex up here, which is indeed powering the SATA hard disk and the SSD in the corner here. So let's bundle all this cabling back up in here and close her up. Like so. And I always seem to have good luck in closing that case, even though it's very, very full. So I've got all that left on the floor safely. Might as well give that a quick wipe in as it's down. It's amazing how dusty it gets very quickly. But anyway, that's all I need to take out. Hopefully that will uh, stop us from kernel panicking. Now I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it in this video, guys, but my Mac Pro is indeed making a sort of... Um, one of my fan bearings is dying kind of noise, which is very annoying because naturally Mac Pro fans are extremely expensive to replace and some of them aren't the easiest to replace either. I haven't even looked into it. I just know that simply from, uh, well, I, I just know because, I mean, look at the machine for God's sake. It is, you know, indeed a work of art, but also very, very hard to work inside. If you want to do anything a little bit out of the ordinary, whew, like changing power supplies and stuff, but I, you wouldn't want to do that anyway, there's no real point. Um, so let's reconnect this G3 to um, everything. Might as well connect it up to everything. Well, this Mac ever so slightly jumped the gun. Uh, as soon as I plugged the power cable back in, it began booting up. Um, because I've got that feature enabled that, uh, whatever it's called, restart automatically after power failure. So, uh, you know, I need to disable that. But yeah, it's spinning up the disc. I can hear it spinning up the disc. And uh, I'm just intrigued to see what it's going to do. Um, because, of course, I've unplugged those SATA hard drives. So it's got nothing to complain about now. Right now, I can hear both hard drives spun up. Uh, we've got a little question mark Mac and uh, and yeah I can hear the CD trying to be read as well because the CD was left in there and now it is what's it doing ah oh yeah this is what I wanted guys this is awesome okay it's doing it it's actually doing it let me get a better angle then seeing as it's working. Check this out guys, this is indeed the original uh, Mac OS 10.1 installer, which I've never installed before. Um, so everything's a little bit different. Let's, let's go through this together. Let me just turn the monitor so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Sorry about your little side on view guys, but you know. Um, use English as my main language, continue. Here it is. <laughs> Brilliant. Continue. Okay, system requirements and stuff. <laughs> At least 128 megabytes of RAM. Oh, how days have changed. How they've really changed. Continue. Agree. So, Mac OS X has, you know, the basic principle of it has stayed the same. Um, oh, even though I've taken out the SATA card, there's still a lot of disks to choose from. This is 10.1, I believe, so we're going to install it there. Um, it's newly been erased, so we're not going to erase it. Install. And here it is. It is installing. So, it's installing off a CD. I, you know, I can't imagine it being very quick. But, um, at the same time, I can't imagine it taking ages either. So, wow, this is interesting. Fairly similar to the Panther window. Um... I assume it's pretty much the same. So yeah, I'll keep an eye on this installation. Of course, I've got this on a KVM, so I literally just press a button and I'm back enjoying my Mac Pro. So um, yeah, I'll leave that installing. We'll just check that it uh, was happy with me switching the key. Yep, was totally happy with that. We've got nothing on the progress bar at the moment, but you know, it's just scanning stuff and whatnot. It's uh, processing Mac OS X.
Lovely, this is exciting guys. I can't wait to see the intro video, I'm really excited about that. With a bit of a better angle and everything like that guys, you can see that there is indeed not that long left. There is five minutes left, so it's going fairly quickly. I'm glad I got this better angle. This is the first ever time on this channel I've installed an operating system live on camera that is older than yeah, Panther. I may have installed XP live on camera one time with some old PC or something, I can't remember. I remember installing Windows 7 and stuff, I don't really remember installing XP in front of camera. I know I have installed XP since I've been on YouTube, a good couple of times actually. But um, I don't know if I've ever done it on camera. So this is quite interesting, you know, because this is this is pretty old now. We're talking 2001, 2002. So you know, over over 10 years old. Um, you're talking 12, 12 years old, something like that. 13 years old. So it's uh, fairly interesting. And uh, like I said, guys, basic stuff. You know, it's a small operating system. It fits on a CD. Um, you know, this is way before any of that, uh, th this is way before they included any of the core technology, so core image, core animation, um, other things like 64-bit uh, integration and all these extra apps like Photo Booth, Time Machine, all these extra bits and bobs that take up loads of space just weren't in these, uh, these early revisions of OS X. They're very, very functional, or they were at the time, very functional operating systems very stripped down um, in comparison to what you had on the Windows side at the time, you know, what was popular on the Windows side which was, you know, XP and lots of people still using 98 and stuff looks so complicated in comparison to, to these simple Mac OS X operating systems um, which I might add still look beautiful today um, still look really really good this installer doesn't look that retro at all. What makes these, you know, anything pre-Leopard look quite old school these days is the solid menu bar. That's the only thing that does it for me. The solid menu bar makes these operating systems look quite retro. And of course, once you get into the system, the uh, brushed metal kind of look on the finder and lots of the windows like that. Um, not really a big fan of the brushed metal. It, it you know, it's, it's a blast from my past, but I definitely prefer um, you know, the look of modern Mac OS X Windows, you know, the, the nice smooth, you know, look. But anyway, I'm going to pause the camera because I'm just ranting about random stuff now. So it now claims that it's going to take less than a minute, which is, uh, you know, normally about three or four minutes. But funnily enough, as I was looking at, um, you know, what it was installing, um, I haven't removed any of the languages and obviously it's gone really quick considering. Now I don't know if it's going to do, I'm, I'm not aware um, how this installer works, so whether it's going to restart um, or simply whether the bars just you know it's going to give me another interface continue and then and then start again or something to do something else I'm not too sure um, I have the CD version of Panther which which comes on multiple CDs um, and you know it restarts a couple of times asks you to insert discs and stuff like that um, but I think that may be only because of the multiple CDs situation I don't really know how this one works but, um, yeah, we're giving it a good will. Something that I really like is the old school beach ball. It's just restarting now, or some, no it's not. It's just refreshing the monitor or something. But, um, yeah, this is a 2001 installer. Um, I'm trying to see if I can make the beach ball appear somehow. Because I did first time I hit about. Um, show log. Come on, beach ball. I love the, the old school beach ball. Anyway, you'll have a chance to see it later. Looks awesome. But one thing that hasn't changed is the uh, is the Apple menu, really. We'll go we'll go through that later when uh, those options become available to us to play with. Um, but it's been on less than a minute for a good four minutes now. Uh, uh, so it's just finishing up. Hey, the software was successfully installed. Let's restart ourselves. Maybe we have to click it. Not sure. I oh, don't. No. It's definitely doing it. That was quite a loud bomb. So the G3 should restart. Hope it doesn't go into OS 9 because it has a habit of just jumping into OS 9 at the most inconvenient points. But it shouldn't. Should guide us through the next few steps necessary to get this operating system up and running on this system. 
so come on. I'd much prefer it if it just worked. I need to remember that this is not on an SSD. I've been used to using this machine now with an SSD on Tiger. However, this is a much older operating system. So, in theory, um, oh, look, look at that, look at that. Should perform relatively the same as Tiger. Mac OS X, look at that retro Apple, love it, absolutely love it, and the retro logo. This is just so, so early noughties. You just look at this and you think, Apple Reborn in a nutshell. This was around about the same time as the original iPod release when Mac started getting really good again and Steve Jobs just started bossing things and dominating the country yet again. Um, so it's doing a couple of little things. I thought it may do something like this because it was a very quick uh, little installer. So this is a little progress bar. Um, it's initialising the network at the moment. So we'll see if it struggles with that. I've got Ethernet plugged into the machine. It's a fairly simple setup, so it should be fine, in theory. But this is just this just screams awesomeness. Now, a funny thing is, guys. Um, even if you were a Mac user, you know, for example, all the way through the '90s, this is what I can gather anyway. You still wouldn't necessarily be running OS X at this version. Um, Hang on a sec, save my rant. Are we going to play intro video? Is that now or is that later? CD spinning up. Okay, what's it say? This is containing no volume. The Mac OS X use the unreadable volume. Click initialize. Oh, guys! playing the music, right? But it's not playing the video. United Kingdom. The music is very cool though. It's so compressed, you can hear it. Okay, so it didn't play the video, guys. Um, interestingly enough, this G3 has indeed played the Panther video and the uh, Tiger video. Now, I'm, I know these Macs avoid playing the video if the graphics card isn't that good. I think that has happened before in the past. Um, but this 9200 may not be fully recognised in this operating system. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's making me enter all this now. Um, house, road, uh, random, and so continue. Oh, guys, what will I be using it for? Other, no, thank you. Continue, create your account. Now, this is. Awesome. Basically, um, wow. This is. It's missed out the whole stage of um, signing into your iTunes account or your Apple account because obviously this is pre when that was you know important. Um, I'd like a free trial account with. Oh my gosh. I have a code for a special offer. I'll use my existing internet service. Continue. Telephone, local area, network, LAN, cable modem. Uh, let's go LAN for now. <laughs> it does support airport, that's fantastic. Your local area, network. Do you want to use configuration? No. Yes, okay, yes. Get iTools. Oh. I'll set up an iTunes Tools account later. Now you're ready to connect. Connecting. <laughs> oh, look at that. Now, this back in the time, guys, would have been 
nothing short of state of the art. But like I was saying earlier, um, ah, whatever, whatever. Like I was, oh no, I don't want to set up mail. Can we just continue without doing it? Yeah, there we go. Um, like I was saying earlier, a, a lot of people missed out on this version, you know. Um, a lot of people were still on OS 9 and didn't migrate over to OS 10 until um, until Panther. Because OS 10 was the because OS 9 still had everything supported. Check it out. This is OS 10. So first off, let's go and find out what version we have about this Mac. Mac OS 10.1.4. Okay, so this is uh, the first stable. I believe this is Puma, guys. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is Puma, I believe. First proper stable release, 10.0, not so much. This one, first true release of Mac OS X, in my opinion. So, um, oh cool, it's got a shortcut to your Mac OS 9 desktop, which is really cool. That is really cool. So yeah, basically guys, that's it for this video. Um, now, can you eject? Yes. Luckily you can. I was only asking because, you know, these are meant to have a button on the front, so, you know. Um, yeah. Awesome. 10.1 Puma. Yeah, I was right. It does say Puma. So that's great. Check it, Check it out, guys. This is awesome. Um, uh, we've, we've got iMovie on this machine, iTunes, Internet Explorer, Mail, Sherlock, QuickTime, System Prefs. And then uh, Mac OS 10 update. This is my OS 9 desktop. Love the way the icons are highlighted. It was like this for uh, for loads of versions of OS 10 until they changed it. Um, doesn't support the volume keys on my keyboard. Interesting. Very interesting. That must have been implemented in further versions. Didn't support my eject key either, which was really interesting. I had to actually physically do it myself. Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of features have stayed the same, guys. I mean, you know, you, you you'll recognise this through and through. It's all it's all the same, really. They're all the same under the hood. You can still do. Ah, oh, look at that. That was amazing back in the day. Oh gosh. Now this is going to be awesome to experiment with. Um, let's boot up IE. Back when web browsers used to have a splash screen before booting up and a horrible interface as well. Man, I actually remember when I had my 2007 MacBook, I had a version of IE on there that I downloaded for a laugh um, on Tiger. Not even sure if IE runs at all on Macs anymore. But look, oh guys, another thing, I know I keep keep going over things here, but um, something, this was before the redesigned Finder. I believe the redesigned Finder came in not too sure where it came to be honest but anyway uh, maybe panther or something like that um, basically you had to browse all the time all the way through all these folders just to get to your important stuff so you know Tom that's my stuff and I've had to go through all of these steps um, but yeah of course you could make shortcuts and stuff you just I believe you could drag favorites up into there as well can yeah to just go straight there but you know that's not really an extensive amount Obviously, you could only resize windows on the corner. It was like that in Tiger. I believe it may have been like that with Leopard. I'm not too sure. But you can only resize on the corner. Um, yeah, very back in the day kind of thing. If I drag that out, will it poof? No. But things poof in here, right? And I'll keep the dock original. Let's take a look at QuickTime then. Just a quick look at QuickTime. Ha. <laughs> You guys all remember that screen. Oh, look at that. It's amazing how much quick time didn't change until Snow Leopard. I mean, look at it. Look at it. Fantastic. Yeah, so this is OS 10. It's not running the best. Great.
window. Well, let, what should we boot up? Old version of iTunes, let's go for it. <laughs> Still the same screen that pops up even today. Nice little wizard, there you go. Ancient version of iTunes there. Oh, old sound effects. Love it. Let's boot up iMovie on top. Let's really give this thing a run for its money. Old version of iMovie. Something's going a little bit full screen here or something's happening. I don't know. Oh, here you go. It's booted up. I just love how compressed the audio is on everything, on absolutely everything here. Now, iMovie looks pretty Final Cut-like here. The windows look all separated and stuff, but it is actually one interface, I believe. Anyway, it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, guys, that's something I love. To... I wish they kept this. The command, um, the command tab feature swaps applications using the dock so you can see the dock which is which is awesome I love it the dock just pings up and it even magnifies I love it it's fantastic anyway that was the installation of um, 10.1 Puma now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this as the default boot up for now so if we go in here and go to start up disk Come on. Yeah. Mac OS X will definitely be the startup disk. Okay, so that one's selected. So if this machine now kernel panics, um, when we started up after reinstalling the SATA card, you know, we know why. We know that it won't run these. Oh, it doesn't ask you, are you sure you want to shut down? That's interesting. Oh, quick shutdown as well. Anyway, time to pause the camera. So just to go over exactly what I've done, guys, just in case any of you are getting a little bit confused if I've moved too quickly or whatever, I have just reinstalled the SATA card into the PCI section. Forgot to film it. Um, I don't know why. I had the camera right there. But anyway, I was just thinking about lots of things about the G3 and I just completely forgot to film it. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, I've installed 10.1 Puma onto the first partition of my 20 gig drive connected to the uh, my 20 gig IDE drive connected to the internal ATA bus and that's got Puma on it it works fine as you guys have seen however I have now reinserted the SATA card and asked the computer um, before I shut it down I asked it to boot into Puma by default not OS 9 so and um, if the SATA card is a big problem and it will conflict with these old operating systems, then it will kernel panic just as it did before. If not, if it doesn't get its knickers in a twist, then it should be absolutely fine. It should just breeze right into Puma. It shouldn't need to worry about the SATA card at all. Um, it's not seeking any data on there. However, it might completely freak out with the SATA card in there because it'll try and, you know, whatever. I'm just going to press the power button and hope for the best. Um, what am I going to do if it doesn't run properly um, with this SATA card installed, if it doesn't boot into Puma properly, then that'll be it for this video. I've, you know, mission accomplished, mission accomplished. I did install an old version of OS X, but um, yeah, sadly, I'd like to keep, and now that's interesting, <laughs> I'd like to keep... Um, my SSD in this system so yeah there you go kernel panic straight away try to boot into Puma and there is our familiar kernel panic so um, yeah if I want to boot into Saiga now which I'll do just to finish this video off all I got to do is unplug both the IDE drives which I think is what I'm gonna do um, so bear with me guys I'm gonna pause the camera and unplug the IDE drives I literally just opened it on the desk and yanked out the connection. Now, I should be able to boot uh, directly into a Tiger that's sitting on my SSD. Now, the IDE drives, ooh, sorry guys, I just walked straight into the tripod. The IDE, ooh, 
And again, Jesus. <laughs> the IDE drives still have power. But, um, yeah, should find the SATA card. I don't know what the hell's going on in my second display there. Um, should find the SATA card and boom, boot from it, really. Um, it, you know. Oh, Oh, Hmm. Yeah. Okay, I think I know why this is happening. Um, I think I know why this is happening. Okay, anyway, successful video, guys. That's my G3. I fiddled with it so much, the poor thing doesn't even want to boot up properly. I'm going to unplug it and give it another couple of days rest. Bless it. Um, yeah, let me unplug it. Poor thing. It deserves a rest. So that's my G3 for now, everyone. Hope you guys have enjoyed those little videos that I've been making about it. Um, plenty more to come, probably. I absolutely love this system. Um, I'll just try and, you know, make a bit more variety until the next G3 video, just because I've been doing a lot. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a fun two-parter video, and I will see you in the next one.